Morning folks. I'm here in the top of Borland today. We're just shy of the middle of December and it's a beautiful, frosty, crisp, clear morning. Although I set off with uh, an insulated jacket on, I've had to take it off, I was too hot. But when I left the car, it was minus two, it was saying on the car. Minus five when I left the house this morning. Um, the plan for today's wild camp is somewhere in the vicinity of Ward Stone, which is the highest point in the forest of Borland. It's a long, long time since I've been up here. Ooh, I don't know, 20, maybe even 30 years. It's a long time, 30 years, yeah, probably nearer the mark. Uh, the forecast uh, is for a bitter cold night. I've seen a range of, of temperatures given up here from minus three to minus seven, so we'll just see. One other thing that defo worthy of a mention, a farmyard animal I always like to see in the countryside, because you don't see very many these days, the turkeys. And I've just passed an absolute beaut in a, in a garden down there. And I expect it's probably only got a couple of weeks left, but uh, just, just have a look at this turkey. What a corker. Right, so I'm headed up onto Tarnbrook Fell now and I've got this grouse track here um, shooter's path that takes me uh, up to that little notch in the skyline up there I think One viewer, a couple of, excuse me, sniffy, uh, films back, asked me about sort of what snacks I eat when I'm walking. Well, there's nothing scientific in it for me, and a nutritionist probably tell me I'm making a big mistake. But in the bag up there, I've got some chicken satay, and the rest here are sort of these like high energy stuff, chocolate, uh, things with nuts in, stuff like that. Uh, I've got a boiled egg in my bag, which, which I always bring as well. So yeah, nothing, nothing fancy, just sort of sweet, high calorific, high carbo sort of stuff. I'm not sure what that carving is that, that on that rock. On that rock, it, I think it's meant to be a W. It must be something to do with the River Wire. We're near the source of it up here. Although it does look more like an upside down M. little shelter. Oh blimey. Well, this is where I, oh, hang on, can you see? Oh, that way somewhere. This is where I leave the, the grouse track now, the, the shooter's track, and I'm bloody glad. Just been pounding a hard storm. Not enjoyed that bit at all. So now it's straight across this, this moor onto Mallow, Mallowdale Fell. And I just follow a fence line that'll take me to Ward Stone. Still a, still a bit to go, at least two miles, I think. There's something quite reassuring coming across a nicely built dry stone wall on a fell top because you always know whatever happens well if the wind's uh, playing ball you've got a sheltered pitch. I tell you what it's a good view to some 
proper Dale's Classics and some old friends of mine that have wild camped on. Let's see if I can point a few out using my stick. That one just above the pole there is oh, Calf Top. That one above Barbendale I did a couple of winters ago. That one just above the stick there is Gregareth. That one above the stick there is Wernside. And of course our old friend Ingleborough. I'll tell you what, it's a stunning viewpoint up here. Just look at that. You're looking there, right across to where is it? Above my finger there. Black Comb, the uh, uh Black Comb, the, the the guardian of the bay in the foreground. I think there's all mist over Markham Bay. Definitely got my eye on Black Comb, I want to do that. Looked at it for years. And then over this way, above there, you've got the Lake District. It's a stunning day. I'm just trying to pick out some of the Lakeland Fells. I'm not sure from here. I think I can pick out Dow Crag and the true Ice Point of Lancashire Coniston Old Man. None of that Gregareth bollocks. I'm doing proper counties. Ward Stone is a, is a double trigger, there's two trig points on it. The one I've just been to there is the easternmost and slightly the highest. I think it's 561 metres, something like that. And there's a western one, which I'm just heading over to now, just a metre or two lower. Here, I've seen two pictures that look just perfect. And in the morning I'll be, I will be descending from this point, but I'll keep an open mind, there might be some actually over on this western side. I mean, I could get a grand grand view overlooking Morecambe Bay, but anyway, we'll see. Plenty of time. This big stone here is the actual Ward's stone, as I understand. I couldn't do it with a big pack on. What a failure. Oh, well, this is a pitch and a half. I absolutely love it up here. That um, freezing fog that swept in, it, as, as quickly as it come in, it, it's gone out again. So that's good. Yeah, it's a fantastic place. Love it. What a view of the mountains. Ingleborough, Pennygent, Pendle. I can even see the hills of home, I think. If you haven't binoculars, I could probably ID a few.
you can really feel the temperatures dropping now. I think the sun's gone behind a, a big bank of cloud to the west. I'll set the uh, temperature in a bit with it with a kestrel. I'm okay though. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've got a new jacket on today. It's uh, a Patagonia Micro Puff, and it's um, rather than down. It's I'm just looking over there. It's got um, man-made fibres in it. I was getting my down jacket, my rab one, wet quite a lot, either with sweat or just probably not managing the weather well enough. And and you know what down's like when it loses uh, when it when it's wet, it loses all its insulation. So. I thought I'd try a, a man-made fibre instead um, and so far so good it's been it's been really warm this today it's uh, and, it, and it's been damp with me sweating and certainly not felt like I've lost any insulation I saw Paul Messner do this nifty little trick where he put um, an elasticated bandage around the gas canister to keep it warm anyway I haven't used an elasticated uh, bandage I found an odd sock in my drawer, so I'll cut the top off that and use that. See if it works. Oh, that's nice. Uh, it's quarter past five. It's, uh, it's dark outside now, obviously. Um, the moon's rising up at the back of Ingleborough, so that's going to put paid to any um, star photos. And I'm glad because I don't want to go out again. It's it's fleeing. Um, I'm all right in here, but bloody ice cold outside. Last time I went out, it, it was still quite light. And it was minus seven, uh, minus seven, no, minus 2.7 on the Kestrel. Uh, so yeah, temp temperatures are really dropping. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not too bad in here. A bit a bit chaotic, a, a mess, but apart from that, I'm okay. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make another warm drink, I think. And I'll speak to you again in a bit. So what can I say about Ward Stone? Well, it's the highest point in the forest of Borland. Um, and it's an hill that's, that's been on me while camping radar for a long time. And the only thing that's put me off is these moors are heavily keepered. And I think I mentioned in an earlier video where I had quite a, quite an unpleasant experience on a, on a heavily keepered moor once. My, my car got damaged. Um, and I suppose there's, there's a risk up here that you could get just turfed off. Um, so when, when I were planning this trip, I thought winter time were best with not much daylight, a lot of night, um, and I'd, I'd probably get un, undisturbed at this time of the year. So that, that were uh, quite a big factor in planning this trip. Another thing, when I looked at the OS map, I couldn't quite decide on best way to get up here. I, I looked from the north, I looked from the west, um, and I've ended up coming from, from the south, a part near Abbeystead, crossed over at Fields to Tarnbrook, walked up the grouse track to the, to the source of the River Wyre, and then I've cut across the moor towards Storm. And tomorrow, um, I'm going to take a more direct route down to Tarnbrook and then back over the same field path back to the car. I should mention a viewer from from I can't remember a few, a few months ago. Uh, I think it, I think he was called Nick. I hope I hope I've got his name right because he uh, emailed me some really useful information for Ward Stone, um, and and that came in handy when planning this trip. I have to mention what. Uh, what I brought with me to read uh, on this trip. My mate Lee, um, who comes wild camping with me quite a bit, he's uh, an author, and I brought with me his latest book. I'm right looking forward to it. I'll just read you a bit, bit of blurb on the back. 
It says, we see what happens when the valleys of Northern England came into conflict with the mighty forces unleashed by the Industrial Revolution. A tale of love and loss, solidarity and struggle. And it's called, hang on, can you see that? Where the skylark sings. I just won't cover that in it. And Lee, thankfully, has autographed it for me. <laughs> and he's, <laughs> he's written something inside, which is a bit daft, but, but I like it. It's right in my street. It says, with best wishes to Butterworth's most esteemed natural historian and felsman, Christopher, Je <laughs> Christopher Jepson Brown. Lee. It's snowing, folks. <laughs> There's that. Right, it's nearly half eleven now and it's snowing quite hard. Um, the forecast did say it might snow a bit during the night, but to be honest, I thought, no, nah, the chances were quite slim, but I don't know whether you can hear that sound of snow pattering on the tent. Um, and with the snow, the temperature's... Uh, risen quite a bit. The, the lowest it got to, it sort of fluctuated between minus five and minus six when, I, when I've been checking the Kestrel. Um, well, I'll leave it now. I, I looked not long ago when it first started snowing, it was like minus two, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely warming up a little bit, but yeah, we'll have to see what it's like in the morning. Right, like I said, that'll do for tonight and I'll speak to you in the morning. Good night. Well, folks, it's 20 to 8, and I'll just, just show you this. Snow. And it's a bit dark at the moment, so I can't really show you outside just yet, but... Uh, yeah, it snowed quite a bit during the night. Well, these are the morning scenes what I've done I've packed everything away inside the tent I've taken down the inner put that in the rucksack and I'm just going to attach the outer to the outside it's misty as well but if I just head due south from here I've got the compass handy I'll come to a good track right back to the tent I'm packing up I'm frozen Right folks, that's me done and dusted. There's the patch where I camped. No trace left, of course. Uh, I'm gonna get on my way, sharpish, and I shall speak to you before I get back to the car. To say it's winter time, it's been cold and snowy. And I've, uh, I'm up in the fells. I've seen quite a few uh, decent birds on this trip. Quite a few field furs in the valley, red wings, uh, ravens on the tops, plenty of grouse. A flush three separate snipe. Um, no, it's been uh, pretty good in that respect. But the best bird of all for me were that bloody big turkey yesterday. What a cracker. I think if I'd have got a turkey for Christmas from a, from a little one, and it turned into something like that, I was fattening it up. I don't think I could put it under the knife. I'd keep it as a pet. Right, I'm back on the fields now that take me back to Abbeystead. So I'm pretty close to the car. No, I really enjoyed that camp. Uh, it had, well, a bit of everything. It was sunny and crisp, pleasant walking, and then born a snow overnight. It was suggested in a couple of the forecasts I read, but I didn't think it was going to happen. Anyway, I'm not sure when this video is going to go out. I don't think it'll be before Christmas, but if it is, if it does, Merry Christmas. I think it's more in line with New Year. So I wish you a Happy New Year for 2023. Thanks for all your support and subscriptions and everything else. This year, it's a bit of a bog. Look after yourselves. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.